Another game with significant meaning at the top of the Big 12 standings is Kansas State traveling to Austin to take on the Texas Longhorns. Texas, a slight four, four and a half point favorite. Total sitting around 51 and a half. This game will be Saturday at noon Eastern on Fox. This game has really come down to the wire in the last seven matchups. Six of the last seven games between these two teams have been decided by seven points or fewer. And Kansas State comes into this game red hot. They are as hot as it gets right now in the Big 12. They've outscored their last two Big 12 opponents by a combined score of 82 to 3. You heard that right. 82 to 3. It's the first time Kansas State's won back-to-back conference games by at least 38 points since 2002 and just the 14th, fourth time in the AP poll era. A big question in this game will be which team will be more physical. Kansas State has met the challenge multiple times this season when they are the more physical team. They were much more physical than UCF. But let's be honest, UCF is still in a bit of a transition mode as they get into Power 5 conference play. They failed the test drastically when they went to Stillwater on Friday night, and they recovered just enough to beat up Texas Tech. Now, TCU in Houston in consecutive weeks looks a little bit more like it as far as the physicality that's expected from Chris Kleiman's team. A big key will be Kansas State's rushing attack against Texas's front seven. Now. If you look at what Kansas State has done from a stat standpoint, they're fifth in college football on the ground, averaging 226 yards per game with DJ Giddens and Treshawn Ward. And the Longhorns have been pretty dang good so far against the run. They're number one in the Big 12, allowing just 98 yards per game on the ground. But we already talked about the running back tandem. The quarterback tandem, that's right, I said that correctly, the quarterback tandem has really been interesting. Not often that you see a two-quarterback system working with this level of efficiency, but a few weeks ago, they decided, hey man, Will Howard and true freshman Avery Johnson, we're going to go with both these guys because they offer different skill sets that complement each other nicely. Well, they've combined for 535 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns on the ground the last three weeks. They're starting to figure things out a little bit. And the mobile quarterbacks have given Texas some problems this year. If you take out the sack yardage, because sack yardage, it shouldn't count towards rushing yardage production. So if you eliminate just the sack yardage, the Longhorns have allowed 330 rushing yards to opposing quarterbacks this season. That's the fourth most in the Big 12. They've allowed 24 10-yard runs, and 11 of those have been by the opposing quarterback. So a mobile quarterback in this situation, whether it's the freshman Avery Johnson Or will Howard anticipate those guys being able to churn out a little bit of yardage with their legs? Texas has had some issues this year in the red zone as well. That's been a hot topic of debate. That's been a lot of discussion. A lot of discussion surrounding Texas's offense's mediocrity when they get inside the 20 of the opposing team. They are currently 101st in the FBS in a red zone scoring percentage. They're scoring just 78.8% of the time. 26 scores on 33 attempts. However, if you go just a little bit further, what's most concerning is that of those 26 scores, only 16 have been touchdowns. Meaning that 16 touchdowns, 10 field goals, that red zone touchdown success is 48.8%, which is good for 120th in college football. Now, their top two yardage outputs offensively this year against both Kansas and Oklahoma, they scored 40 points and 30 points respectively. Pretty good days at the office. But if you look at the games that saw their least amount of yards offensively, 316 against Wyoming and 354 against BYU, Sark scored, Sark's team scored just 31 points and 35 points. But you got to take into account that red zone is just not good enough, especially against BYU, just two of five in the red zone. That's not going to be good, especially when you're 0 for 3 on first and goal scenarios. Malik Murphy will be another topic of debate heading into this game. Now, they tried to get him into a bit of a rhythm last week. They called passes on nine of the first 10 offensive plays, including a lateral, which means they're trying to kind of jumpstart his confidence and, and getting him on the same page and getting him into the game earlier, the better. 
but he became very, very human last week. Like, like most young quarterbacks, when he got pressure, he didn't handle it very well. Now, he wasn't pressured often. Just seven of his 29 dropbacks resulted in pressure. But those seven plays in which he was pressured, he was just two of six with a pick. So can Kansas State ramp up the pressure a little bit and make the young quarterback feel it? Because when he wasn't under arrest last week, he threw a couple touchdown passes and was relatively efficient. And Kansas State's defense, they haven't been great pressuring the opposing quarterback this year. Just 31% of the opposing quarterback's dropbacks, they felt pressure. But when they send a blitz, they more often than not will ramp it up. They can bring pressure on blitzes 56% of the time, which is 12th in college football. So when just rushing four, not great, 103rd in the FBS. But when they overload with five or more, they're 12th in the FBS. So expect a bunch of pressure being called from Kansas State to try to make Malik Murphy make a mistake. I look at Texas in this game, and I think it's a bad matchup for Kansas State. Texas is going to be stout against the run. Texas has good enough perimeter skill defensively to match up with what I think is an underwhelming group of Kansas State wide receivers. Texas has traditionally fared pretty well in this matchup. They've covered each of the last three meetings against Kansas State. I think is the best version of Texas that we've seen in the last four week, four years. And I'm not yet 100% sold. It is the best edition of Kansas State that I've seen. I think Texas wins the game comfortably. Seven or more, probably closer to 10 in favor of the Longhorns.